Join us for our upcoming fundraiser, A Feast for the Senses, at Ardmore Music Hall on September 29th to help HRN expand our table and provide even more resources to the next generation of food storytellers. This is going to be an unforgettable night of flavors, crafted by Best of Philly chefs Randy Rucker and Eli Collins, with sounds curated by Philly-based Spaga featuring Aaron Magner, and conversations inspired by delicious City Philly host Eli Culp. You can find tickets at heritageradionetwork.org slash feast. And if you can't make it to our fundraiser, please consider donating to support our education programs at heritageradionetwork.org slash donate. You're listening to Heritage Radio Network. If you've been hearing a lot about or reading a lot about mezcal lately, it's because mezcal is having a moment. So what's the deal? Well, it's often handmade using pre-industrial methods. It's not cookie cutter like so much of what we eat and drink these days. And when you taste it, if you know how to taste it, you'll recognize exactly that. Recognize the heartbeat that is the lifeblood of this movement. But the growing interest means to fulfill demand, corners are starting to be cut. Well, that's not the case with Mezcal Ultramundo, an exceptional small batch Mezcal from Durango. It's made from wild Lamparillo agaves harvested sustainably from a 24,000 acre ranch that's home to purple nopales, wild desert tortoises, all manner of biodiversity. And Mezcal Ultramundo never harvests more than 80% of their mature agaves. They ensure that every harvested plant is replaced in its wild setting by a next generation seedling if you want to taste the wild deserts of durango mexico taste mezcal otramundo and know that with every sip you'll also be protecting those wild deserts I am Lou Bank. And I'm Linda Sullivan. And this is Agave Road Trip, the critically acclaimed award-winning podcast that helps Greek ex-bartenders that understand agave, agave, agave spirits, spirits, and, and rural Mexico. <laughs> Thank you, Linda. <laughs> hey, Linda. So, you know, I'm uh, scrolling through the Instagram, and my friend uh, uh, Lady Agave, Miss Agave, <laughs> Lady Agave. <laughs> oh, no. Sir, I just saw the Deadpool movie, and I was thinking Lady Deadpool. Uh, Miss Agave... Um, had this uh, uh, this what do you call them a reel I a guess reel. It's a reel yeah. yeah it's a reel a little video what do you kids call them reels so it's, it's it's also didn't she do it's like a stitch too because she was commenting on another video oh man so I there's don't know two videos two we're, reels we're not here to talk it about is technology too real. <laughs> anyway um, and the whole point to it was uh, that she is annoyed with this uh, this thing that keeps popping up where people say that mezcal is smoky tequila. Yeah, she's not happy about that. She's not happy about that, and um, and I I have I have to disagree with her. I think that uh, that mezcal is smoky tequila. Lou Bank is here to disagree with <laughs> some sort of philosophy or statement. What's happening? <laughs> yeah, I know, right? The great contradictorian. Wait, did I do that right? Ooh, if it's a new contrarian, word, that's I, it. The great I contrarian. There we are. The great contrarian. Um, so. My premise is that, in fact, mezcal is smoky tequila. I want to, I, before we get into it, I want to know where do you stand, Linda? I mean, it's all there. So I'm not. I beat what? I. <laughs> okay, touche. Called out. Um, I, it doesn't feel all that important to me because I think that they are just tools to try and help folks understand what's happening in that category. So I'm not really mad at anyone. I'm not going to be the great contradictarian <laughs> in this one. But as always, I'm curious. Yeah, there you go. I like that. So, you know, I, I'm looking at the numbers. There's a new Comer Cam report out. Have you seen it yet? I have not. So there's a new Comer Cam report out. That's the one of the regulatory bodies uh, that uh, certifies Mezcal. I believe they're they're still the biggest. Um, and it is their report as to how much mezcal was made and sold and exported um, in 2023. And how, in, how are we looking? A uh, little down. 
Oh, really? Yeah. We got to get to sipping. <laughs> Shoot. That's right. People aren't, aren't drinking enough of the smoky tequila. So <laughs> um, it says that uh, 12.2 million liters, which is, you know, a little down from the previous year, 12.2 million liters were produced in 2023. Now, 86% of that it was made using espadine. And that that goes up to 89%, just shy of 90% when you're looking at espadine plus another agave, right? And Oh, like a blend, you mean? Yeah. Espadine and any other varietal together? Yeah. Okay. You you know, we've got some friends who put that into a bottle and they sell it to bars across the country, they across do? the globe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And when I hear that, like I'm not saying that all espadine is made for cocktails, but I'd argue most of it is. Mm -hmm. I think so, too. And I would also argue, um, and I, I hope our uh, mutual friend Milena doesn't get mad at me for saying this, I'd also argue that the vast majority of the mezcals that are made from espadine for cocktail use are intentionally smoky, like big smoky. Yes, I also think that's true. Yeah, because when you put it into a cocktail, and the vast majority of people in the USA are drinking their mezcal and cocktails, mm -hmm. right? Yep. When you put it into a cocktail, you want that smoke to shine so that you know it's a mezcal cocktail. Right. I think there's some like cyclic reasoning there. It because we believe that mezcal equals smoky all the time. Mm -hmm. And we know that that's not true. And our Gring X bartenders yeah. know that that's not true. Some of them do, some don't. Exactly. Yeah. Lots of variety in the category. But because we believe that, I think maybe the arrow circles back around and affects how the producers are making choices for the American market or the market market. Yeah. Question oh, mark, right? Oh, I we, would say absolutely. Everyone thinks mezcal is smoky, so I'm going to make my mezcal big and smoky to match the expectation that is just swimming out there. Yeah, I mean, you're saying the producers. I'd actually say the brands. The brands, but, but, yeah, is is more accurate. Right. So now imagine uh, you are that that uh, that unicorn. I guess snow leopard because unicorns don't exist. You are that snow leopard of a uh, of a drinker, and you wander into a bar and you you have had your mezcal cocktail, but now you want to try it neat. Mm -hmm. What does that bar have to serve to you? <laughs> Depends on the bar. <laughs> it, it, that's exactly right. Right. And, Often. And, 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 and if I am that snow leopard, do I even know how to find the bar that's going to have, A, do I know how to find a bar that has a broad selection? B, do I even understand that there is such a thing as a broad selection? No, no most of you don't. We're sad little snow leopards. <laughs> most of you snow leopards do not. No. Right. So for that that average consumer and the snow leopard unless you are that tiny tiny do you will you live within the bubble of people who like to yell at me on smoked agave or mezcal society right <laughs> Un unless you're in that tiny tiny little bubble right. that you know according to uh to comer cam's report is you know maybe maybe four percent of the market mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right unless you're in that bubble you're not even going to know to ask for something other than, hey, I, I, I'd, uh, I'd like to try a mezcal, please. Okay. And as a bartender, well, you, you've you been known to stand behind a bar or two, Linda. Mm -hmm. Somebody came, <laughs> well, you're going to be the snow leopard bartender, though. If <laughs> if the snow leopard comes into your bar and says, I'd, I've had a mezcal cocktail. Yeah. I'd like to try a mezcal neat. Tape yourself to your seat. Class can begin now. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. But knowing right, your the colleagues, example is not me. <laughs> right, but but a, yeah. a Friday. Actually, let, let's let's go back to you on a Saturday night, and you're three deep at mm, the bar. What are you doing? Yeah, that's a clever example. Um, Right. It depends on what's behind the bar. Initially, when when you said that, moving from a cocktail to a, what I would call a sipping mezcal, mm -hmm. a lot of folks, maybe they have one or two bottles of mezcal. If they're not an, an agave bar or angled that way, they may have nothing but espadín, right? Yeah. And if the person w wants, if the guest wants to sip a mezcal because they liked the cocktail, that's so tricky because... They 
it's unlikely that they actually want to sip that mezcal, right? It's probably not a sipping mezcal, I would call, I would say. Well, you could sip any mezcal. Of yes, course. thank you. They, they, of course, yeah, you could sip any mezcal. But, but it, what's the bartender gonna do? Like, start a full dialogue when you're when you're three deep at the bar on a Saturday night. Yeah, you're right. In that example, that would be really challenging to do what I would want to do. Yeah, which would be you know kind of hold their hand and take them over that that wonderful bridge of moving from cocktail mezcal to like a more nuanced understanding of the category. You know what I'm feeling like, Linda? Hmm. I feel like, it, it, this is on the spot, it's not in my notes. Oh! I know, right? What I feel like is maybe uh, what you and I need to do is put together like a little, uh, a, a little, oh, maybe it's a, 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 what do they put the the coaster? Maybe it's a little coaster that uh, we can print up that is something a bartender could hand to the snow leopard on a Saturday night, three deep, that says, so you want to sip your mezcal. That says, look, most mezcal you're going to find is going to be smoky espadine, which would actually kind of qualify as smoky tequila. Mm -hmm. And if you want to try that, cool. But here are some other things you should think about. Mm -hmm. And... And just list, talk about agaves, talk about process, talk. So maybe come back and talk to me on a Tuesday, or mm. tell me you want something that's not smoky. Tell me you want something that's fruity. Tell me you want something herbaceous, um, and and I'll I'll do my best to fulfill your wishes. I mean, I love that. I would say that the closest, um, comparatively, the closest example that does exist to that are like flights with little info cards. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. maybe you, there's like a flight of three. Now, you know, the the <laughs> uh, qualifier is that like a bar that doesn't focus on agave is probably not going to offer this. But some of the maybe more agave rich bars that have a larger selection, their staff is more educated on it, et cetera. They might have, you know, three sipping mezcals in it. My or not even mezcal agave spirits, right? Yeah. Maybe there's like a tequila and then a mezcal made with tequilana and then a non smoky mezcal and it's like an intro flight or something like that, you know? Oh, you want to explore mezcal? Why are you laughing at me? This is a um, great idea. It, 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 <laughs> it, it, it is a great idea. Did you listen to the episode last week of the flights or y yeah, 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 oh, yeah? Oh, you did listen. I was going to say you were too busy listening to, to Chava's no, uh, podcast. No, no. You actually did listen to it. <laughs> I did. <laughs> But, you know, I, I, I love that. And I also can understand why most bars just aren't set up to do flights. I mean, even in terms of the... Um, the like glassware, the uh, yeah, boards. I, I was going to the... say copitas, but, you know, you say copita to most bars, they don't even know what you're talking about. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I love the idea of more bars having flights. But I also love the idea of creating some kind of little coaster that we can just yeah. send off to bars that are interested. I think that's a cool yeah. idea. Yeah, I dig that. Okay, so that's going to be in the uh, in the episode webpage. If you're one of those Green Gex bartenders that's interested in that idea, uh, that'll be up there. You could even put a little QR code on there. But, so if people want to dig deeper, they could go to an informational source. Yeah, like a podcast, like Heritage <laughs> Mescal. So, um, <laughs> so, okay, so now uh, accepting the idea that I am correct, that uh, that mezcal is just smoky whoa, tequila. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, so what 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 is another way that you could describe the opportunity to taste a mezcal that isn't smoky tequila? Wait, why are you? I'm. I need your hill better defined. The hill that you're dying on. I don't think I'm dying. Am I dying? You're dying. Okay. We're so all dying I'm... right now. Why? Yeah, well, fair. Because because Espadin is the parallel to Blue Weber. Well, what tequilana, well, here's... and it is mostly yeah, 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 made smoky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, but what I'm thinking is, uh, you know, you could say yes, mezcal is smoky tequila, and it's also what. It's also it's also a garden of flowers. It's also all oh, right. Other tasting notes. Yeah. You're saying yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. 
It's also, you know, a, a, a boiling a pot verdant, of herbs. A verdant green yeah. field. Yeah, you know, the, the ones that get me uh, so excited, yeah, I think we've had this conversation before, the three flavor notes that get me most excited are uh, when I get that uh, poblano chili with no heat, but right, it's just mm-hmm. it's poblano chili all right. day long. Yep. Uh, the blue cheese. So yeah. you're, it's like cheesy tequila. There you go. Mezcal is like cheesy tequila. It's like uh, uh, tequila poblano. And uh, and then the third thing is the roasted peanuts. It's also... Oh, yeah. You love that. Yeah. It's like, so mezcal is also tequila with peanuts envy. <laughs> Okay, I like that. It's see, but you are actually fitting right into my non-committal posture of this. That it's it's a teaching tool. She's right, homegirl Miss Agave. She's right, and that's a more nuanced description. And you're also right because all these things are just little teaching tools to bridge to a greater understanding of the category, or a greater greater understanding of understanding that you don't know anything great. <laughs> Yeah, let's get there. Yeah. <laughs> That's the goal. Okay, I think, do you have anything else to add to this, Linda? Um, No, but I'm getting a little hungry now that we're talking about all the flavor notes. Well, this might be time. Let's to, have a snack. Like tinned fish? <laughs> oh, gross. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Linda, then I'm going to call this a wrap. Thanks for joining me on this episode of Agave Road Trip. We will see you later. You've been listening to Agave Road Trip, the critically acclaimed award-winning podcast that helps gringo bartenders better understand agave, agave spirits, and rural Mexico. We're blessed with sound engineering by Roy Sierra and a theme song performed by Gabriel Oliveira and Marco Ricos. Sign up to become a road tripper and listen to more episodes at agaveroadtrip.com. If you enjoyed this podcast, please let us know. And if you hated it, well, I'm sure you'll let us know that too. You can also find us on Facebook and Instagram at Agave Road Trip. Agave Road Trip is a production of 10 Angry Pit Bulls, Inc. Agave Road Trip is powered by Simplecast. Thank you for listening to Heritage Radio Network. Heritage Radio Network is food radio supported by you. For our freshest content, subscribe to our newsletter. To subscribe to the Heritage Radio Newsletter, enter your email at the bottom of our website, heritageradionetwork.org. Connect with Heritage Radio Network on Instagram and Twitter at heritage underscore radio. You can also find Heritage Radio Network at facebook.com slash heritage radio network. Heritage Radio Network is a nonprofit organization using the power of education educational storytelling about food to build a more equitable, resilient food system. Heritage Radio Network couldn't do that without support from listeners like you. Become a part of the world's most innovative community today. Subscribe to the shows you like. Tell your friends. And please join the Heritage Radio Network family by becoming a member. To become a member of the Heritage Radio Network, click on the beating heart of our homepage. Heritage Radio Network can become addictive. Programming you hear on Heritage Radio Network might lead you to eat, drink, and listen to more programming on Heritage Radio Network. If you drink, please do not drink and drive. Drink responsibly. Drive responsibly. Eat responsibly, too. And listen to Heritage Radio Network responsibly. To listen to Heritage Radio Network responsibly wear protective earbuds while wearing protective earbuds do not drive do not walk either sit in a comfortable chair if that comfortable chair has a hard seat please remember to stretch every 30 minutes if you stretch every 30 minutes please stay within your defined stretching capacity and consult a doctor who specializes in stretching if you don't have a doctor maybe dr ryan acock the cocktail md can help you out thanks for listening agave road trip out